Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. If this is your first time visiting the channel, welcome. I'm Justin with Excelsmith. If you've been here before, welcome back. Traditionally, the match function is used to find the location of a value based on a single search criteria. What if you want to locate the value based on multiple search criteria? Well, I'm glad you asked. In this video, we'll build two different match equations to do just that. Let's get started. The dataset contains information about various characters from The Simpsons. The goal for this video is to use the match function to return the first name from column A for a given last name and voice actor. The techniques covered in this video also work with the newer xmatch function. In this example, we'll search for the character with the last name Simpson, which is listed in cell G2, as well as the voice actor, Nancy Cartwright, which is listed in cell H2. For the first equation, start by selecting cell H7. Next, type an equal sign, the function name match, and an open parentheses. The first parameter of match is the value we want the equation to search for. In this example, we want to search by both last name and voice actor. Start by selecting cell G2 to search for characters with a last name of Simpson. To add the second criteria, which is voice actor, we need to first type an ampersand. Next, select cell H2. We could add as many search criteria as we want, just make sure they are separated by ampersands. With our search criteria set, type a comma to go to the second parameter. The order of the values in the first parameter doesn't matter. However, when searching for multiple criteria with the match function, it's important that the lookup arrays in the second parameter are in the same order as the lookup values in the first parameter. Since we listed last name and then voice actor in the first parameter, we have to mirror this order in the second parameter. Begin the second parameter by selecting the range B1 through B32. Like with the lookup values, we separate the lookup arrays with an ampersand. After typing the ampersand, select the range C1 through C32. It's important that the multiple ranges cover the same row numbers. With a lookup array set, type a comma to go to the last parameter. The third parameter tells match how precise it should be when looking for the value set in the first parameter. For our example, we only want the function to return a match if an exact match is found, so we'll select option zero. Lastly, type a closing parentheses to complete the function. This match equation will look through the range B1 through B32 for the last name set in cell G2, which in this example is Simpson. It will then look through the range C1 through C32 for the voice actor set in cell H2, which is Nancy Cartwright. This is why the order is so important for the ranges entered in the second parameter. If the ranges were reversed, the equation would look for a last name of Nancy Cartwright and a voice actor of Simpson. Go ahead and press enter to see the result. The function returns the row number for the first row that contains both a last name of Simpson and a voice actor of Nancy Cartwright. If there are no rows with both of these values, the function will return an error. To make this more meaningful, let's wrap the match equation inside the index function. Start by selecting cell H7, then placing the cursor between the equal sign and the function name. Next, type index and then in open parentheses. The first parameter of index is the range containing the value we want returned based on the row number provided in the second parameter. Our goal is to return the first name, so we'll select the range A1 through A32. Type a comma to go to the next parameter. This parameter tells the index function which row from the range in the first parameter it should return. This number is set by the match equation we built earlier. This means we can enter a closing parenthesis at the end of the equation and press enter. That's better, we now get the first name Bart instead of just a row number. The first example showed how to search for multiple criteria by separating the lookup values and lookup arrays with ampersands. Let's take a look at a slightly different structure to search for multiple criteria using the match function. In cell H8, type an equal sign, match, and an open parentheses. In the previous example and most match equations, we enter a value from our data that we want to search for. However, for this solution, we're going to enter the number 1. Don't worry, this will make sense shortly. After entering the number 1, type a comma to go to the second parameter. Again, we would normally enter a range from our data that we want to search for the value in the first parameter. However, our last name and voice actor columns aren't going to contain the number 1. So, why did we enter 1 for the first parameter? It's because we are going to do some Boolean calculations in the second parameter. Don't worry, that's just fancy speak for comparing trues and falses. The first conditional equation we'll enter will check for the desired last name. Since we will be comparing two values, we need to enter our comparison equations inside parentheses. Start by typing in open parentheses and then selecting the range B1 through B32. We need the equation to check each of the values in this range against the last name entered in cell G2 and return true for any matches and false for the values that don't match. Type an equal sign followed by selecting cell G2. Type a closing parentheses to complete this comparison equation. That's the first half of our conditional checks. 
Our goal is to return the first first name with a last name and voice actor that matches the values in cells G2 and H2. Since we want an AND comparison, we need to multiply the first conditional equation by the second. We are using multiplication because we want a true only if both sides are true. Additionally, when we multiply trues and falses in Excel, the result is a 1 for true and a 0 for false. In other words, true times true returns a 1 while all other possibilities return a 0. This is why we set the lookup value to the number 1. We want to return the first row with a lookup array that evaluates to true times true, which is 1. Let's enter the second comparison equation by typing an asterisk for multiplication and then in open parentheses. This equation will look for the voice actor. Select the range C1 through C32 and then type an equal sign followed by selecting cell H2. Complete this equation by typing a closing parentheses. Lastly, type a comma to go to the third parameter. Like the first example, we only want to return values with an exact match so we'll select option 0. Type a closing parentheses and press enter. Like with the first example, we get the number 4. Let's wrap this match equation inside an index function as well. After the equal sign, type index followed by an open parentheses. Next, select the range A1 through A32 followed by a comma. Lastly, type a closing parentheses at the end of the equation and press enter. If you're getting value from this video, that's awesome. Let us know by pressing those like and subscribe buttons. It's greatly appreciated and helps the channel grow. Both of these equations are equivalent. They return the first match with a last name of Simpson and a voice actor of Nancy Cartwright. When performing a simple equality check like we did here, I prefer the first method as it's shorter and easier to interpret. So why did we look at the second method? Another great question. The first method only works when performing simple equality checks like last name equals Simpson and when all comparisons have to be true to return a result. In addition to supporting OR comparisons, the second method allows for more complex comparisons. To see an example of this, let's build an equation that returns the first first name with a voice actor of Nancy Cartwright and an original air date greater than or equal to January 1st, 1989. This would exclude BART since BART's original air date was April 19th, 1987. To start, let's copy the equation from cell H8 and paste it into cell H9. Make sure to copy the equation from the formula bar to maintain the cell and range references. Next, delete the last name comparison but leave the parentheses and the asterisk. With the cursor inside the parentheses, select the original air date range E1 through E32. Next, type a greater than sign followed by an equal sign. To perform the date comparison, we'll use the date function. Type the function name date followed by an open parentheses. For the first parameter, enter the year 1989. Type a comma to go to the month parameter and then enter 1 for January. Lastly, type a comma to go to the day parameter and then type 1 again. Type a closing parentheses to complete the date function and then press enter. That's great, the equation returns Todd, who is the first first name with both a voice actor of Nancy Cartwright and an original air date greater than or equal to January 1st, 1989. In this equation, we were able to use another function to help with our matching. The result of multiplying multiple conditional equations is either a 1 or a 0. If we were to use only a single function in the lookup array, for example, just the date function, we would set the first parameter of match to true since there is no Boolean arithmetic converting the trues and falses to a 1 or a 0. This equation is another example of an AND comparison. In other words, both the voice actor and original air date have to return true for the equation to return a match. This version of searching for multiple criteria with a match function also works with an OR comparison. Let's modify the equation we just built to return the first match with either a voice actor of Nancy Cartwright or an original air date that's greater than or equal to January 1st, 1989. First, copy the equation in cell H9 and paste it into cell H10. Again, make sure to copy the equation from the formula bar. To modify the equation from an AND comparison to an OR comparison, we first need to replace the asterisk with a plus sign. Then press enter. Well, that's unexpected. The equation returns the value first name because the value original air date in cell E1 is, according to Excel, greater than or equal to the date January 1st, 1989. The easiest way to fix this is to adjust the starting row of all of our ranges from row 1 to row 2. After making the update, press enter. That's more like it. We get Bart, who doesn't have an original air date that meets our criteria, but does have the correct voice actor. There is a bit of a gotcha here. When using addition, the only way to get a zero or false is when both sides are false. If either side or both sides are true, we get a non-zero value. This poses a problem. If only one of the conditions is true, we're golden. However, if both conditions are true, like with Todd, our logic of searching for a one fails. Let's evaluate the second parameter of our match equation to better understand this. 
First, select cell H10 and then place your cursor in the formula bar anywhere inside the match function but not inside the date function. Next, select lookup array to highlight the second parameter. With the parameter highlighted, press F9 on either Mac or PC to evaluate it. There's the problem. Those twos are the output of both conditions being met. Our equation works because Bart is the first character that meets one of the conditions. If he met both conditions like Todd, the match function would ignore him because it's looking for a value of one as defined in the first parameter. When performing an OR comparison, we have to add one more step to avoid this mistake. We have to wrap the second parameter inside an IF statement to leave the zeros as is, but convert any non-zero number to a one to satisfy the first argument of the match function. Press escape to get back to the equation. Next, place the cursor after the first comma inside the match function. Then type the function name IF followed by an open parentheses. We want to compare the output of the entire lookup array, so we'll enter another open parentheses. Type a closing parentheses after the closing parentheses of the voice actor equation. Then type a greater than sign followed by the number zero. Next, type a comma to go to the second parameter of the if function. We want to return a one for any row that returns true in the first parameter. This will convert any scenario to a one when at least one of the conditional checks returned true. After typing the one, enter a comma to go to the last parameter. For any row that is not greater than zero, we want to keep the zero since it did not match any of our criteria. Type a closing parentheses to complete the if function and then press enter. Even though the result didn't change, the OR equation now successfully handles the scenario when multiple criteria return true. To check this, let's update the original error date for BART with that of Todd's to cause the date comparison portion of the equation to also return true. That's great, the value in cell H10 didn't change. If you've enjoyed using multiple criteria with the match function, you should check out this video where we combine multiple criteria with the filter function. Like with match, multiple criteria takes the filter function to another level. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.